derived from the by amines, by amines, two amines. Okay? And uh, so we uh, first uh, check uh, what kind of diamine is available from the amino acid. So I told that it's one the amino acid diamine. A little strange, but uh, this is uh, amino acid is a very common okay, term. So we say this one amino acid diamine. So this is a kind of amino acid diamine. Uh, lysine and alkene, and uh, only two uh, amino acid diamines are available from the amino acid. And uh, from this one, uh, some kind of the refinery is already established to get the uh, uh, lysine by antigenate. This is very high reactive, and uh, hexamazine by emic diamine. And this will uh, get uh, the result of the decarboxylation, hence in Another kind of the uh, diamine. The paper shape case, okay, this is also already published. But uh, uh, please uh, check this one. Non aromatic one, no benzene. Okay? This is very bad for us. So we also try to check another kind of the, uh, diamine available from the uh, nature. Okay? So this is the structure of the pressure machine, a kind of the antibiotics. This antibiotics uh, prepared from the streptomyces species. These uh, streptomyces species is very easy to get. I think uh, around you, streptomyces, many streptomyces at this. Okay? In the soil, so many streptomyces. Maybe you know the soil is uh, all that is uh, composed of the inorganics. So that should not smell, but actually smell. The, the smell of that. The smell of the soil is from the streptomyces organism. Okay? And some production is smell from this one. And uh, this produces the antibiotics. And from this, uh, as a one small component in the aromatic diamine. Okay? Actually, this is the aromatic amine and the aromatic amine component is uh, available. Uh, this is the four amino mineral name. The four amino mineral name is a kind of the diamine. Uh, but uh, uh, very exotic, a very small amount. Yeah. So uh, this has to be uh, must uh, produce. And uh, my uh, very nice uh, collaborator uh, produced this one, uh, whose name is uh, Professor Takaya from uh, 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 Tsukuba University. Uh, he is trying to uh, make a uh, genetically engineer, the Shigeya Kolai, using a gene from the Sulosomyces uh, species and uh, getting the, this one came out as a powder, okay? Uh, this other powder, this is very difficult, but uh, it takes uh, three years to uh, succeed. And we get uh, this kind of four amount of came out and uh, we try to prepare the uh, direct organization, okay? Uh, to prepare the uh, polymers, okay? And uh, for example, uh, this uh, one came out in this react with the dialysis channel. Very high reactivity, and then uh, only mix to get the uh, polyurea. And uh, but uh, uh, this uh, other result of the, uh, getting the, this polymer, uh, the radiation temperature is not so high actually, it's 300 degrees Celsius, almost similar to the polyester. This is not good. So we also change the uh, structure from this one phenomenon to amino synthetic acid. Okay. This is the more industry. Okay. This is prepared from the uh, very simple reaction under the uh, airline of this one to get the uh, yellow powder. This yellow powder is showing a very high uh, purity. The high purity is also very difficult uh, by fermentation. But the Professor Takaya succeeded. And we get uh, the, this kind of uh, formula, uh, formula synergy from the Professor Takaya. And we try to see the sign of this kind of polyamide. It's aromatic polyamide, but they're not successful. The side reaction curl, uh, this uh, amine is react with that bond. Uh, this is the kind of my chemical addition. Please remember my chemical addition. Okay? It's very famous chemistry. So we changed the uh, molecular design, and actually, this switch dimerized to use this double bond by auto dimerization. And this kind of the photodiamination produces the uh, aromatic diamine. So this is the first 
example of the biofuels are much higher. Okay, but uh, I think the, if you know the chemistry, maybe you recognize that this uh, very many kind of isomers in the available uh, because uh, this all this showing the cis trans isomer okay, are for carbon. So okay, due uh, to the post uh, uh, this calculation of showing the uh, 16 isomer. But this symmetrical effect is plain, this symmetrical effect, uh, this uh, showing the minus one. So uh, 15 isomers can be considered the uh, structure of the disk. This calculation is made by uh, this, uh, uh, Mr. Okura. And, uh, and then uh, we try to prepare the only one uh, uh, the amines for the uh, optimization of the condition. So we use the uh, so then, uh, okay, hexane and benzene. Uh, the our compound for amino acid is dispersed into the hexane or amine and the photoelectricity. And after photoelectricity, uh, we get uh, this kind of trichloric acid. Okay, this is the amine, this is amine, and this is amine. This is the aromatic diamine. And uh, do not surprise this one. So this one, conversion is one hundred percent. Okay. This is not 99%, this is 100%. Because the, uh, this is more than 100% and crystal to crystal reaction. Okay? So uh, we have no loss uh, by this reaction. And uh, after preparing this one, we check the structure by using a single crystal analysis. And uh, this is uh, alpha solution gas. Okay? This is the results. Alpha, alpha type means that it's all arch directions. So amine and amine are so good. Amine and amine is arch. Carboxylic acid is also arch. And uh, after uh, protection of the carboxylic acid, we can get this kind of the uh, diamine and various kind of the uh, polymer also prepared. And uh, if we prepare uh, this kind of the polyamine uh, as, uh, as a reaction with the trump diamine. Uh, we get aromatic polymer uh, using uh, amidoline phases. And uh, this shows the uh, uh, very strong uh, value. This is over 160, uh, 170. Yes. And uh, we try to also try to prepare uh, these kind of uh, aromatic diamine. This is bio-based aromatic diamine. Uh, this structure is very easy. Okay? And you can get this one. Okay? This uh, amide, okay, cyclobutane, benzene, cyclobutane, benzene, and this is very rigid structure. Then this shows the very high metallic properties. The, for example, so, the young modulus, this is in the hardness, hardness, this is over the 10 gigapascal, and the maximum stress, this is over the 350 gigapascal. This is very high value. Uh, for example, this one, please check that this uh, product. Okay, this is so the strain curves. This is typical method to check the mechanical properties. So for example, uh, you know the polycarbonate and the polymetal metacrylate, these have already used as uh, transparent resins. Okay? So big, okay, aquarium. That's it prepared from the polymetal metacrylate. This is a uh, uh, very strong and not so easy to break. And this uh, mechanical property, okay, uh, mechanical stress at the break is almost 60 megapascal. This is strong. Uh, but the more strong one is available. Okay? The Palex glass. Maybe for chemistry, maybe you can use the glass. Strong glass for chemistry reaction. This is Palex glass. Actually, this is borrowed silicate glass. This is showing almost 120 megapascal. And fluorinated polyimide. This is also very attractive. Transparent daily. This almost shows the 120 megapascal. This is higher uh, mechanical strength. And uh, recently, the, the nice uh, bio biological derived uh, uh, transparent resins developed. Uh, this is uh, uh, nanocellulose. Okay? Nanocellulose shows uh, over 200. So this is uh, uh, very strong, higher than the pyrex glass. But the pure ions, almost similar to the pure ions. Pure ions is almost 250. This is the strong thing, and this is shown the uh, sodium temperature over 300 degrees uh, Celsius. 
this is higher than the polyester or other, and uh, the relation temperature is more higher, over 400 degrees Celsius. And then I only also try to show the video. Okay. This is our volume. Uh, this is good application. This is the temperature. Temperature. And this temperature increase. The gradually this is very so for example, that is one of the conductivity of conventional polyester. This uh, almost shows the uh, melting behavior among 80 degrees Celsius. Okay? Or uh, melting. But uh, our polymer is not melt. That's true. I'll be picked up the sheet. And uh, this is frame. Frame one. Okay. Uh, I guess the frame. This is also very important. For example, this is zero pound, zero pound. It's very easy to get fire. Okay, this is cannot be extinguished. But uh, our point is like this. This is once it's in front, but uh, it's automatically extinguished. This is self-extinguished behavior. This is very important to apply as a uh, automobile or aircraft or other. Okay, can't get fire. Okay, like this. And after that, uh, we also try to prepare another kind of application for transparent memory. Okay? Uh, this is a collaboration with the uh, National Highway University professor, Professor Liu. And uh, he, he tried to make uh, this kind of polying, and, and actually, this is uh, uh, very transparent. And uh, this is a hybrid uh, with the titanium and the zirconium. Okay? And uh, this is to keep the transparency, because the strength is also very high. And then a very fantastic behavior, okay? Uh, this is zero uh, voltage. If this apply the voltage, this is suddenly increase the punish, okay? Uh, and uh, this distance is become low, suddenly. But uh, in the normal case, this is uh, again recovered uh, here. But uh, in, in our polymer case, uh, this uh, keep the more than uh, several uh, seconds is keep the very low density. This is a memory behavior. And then if this, if this is the zirconia uh, amount increased, uh, this time uh, keep the uh, very low distance uh, time. This is more than two hours or three hours. And uh, we can get another kind of the, uh, memory devices. If this transparent memory devices, is this applied uh, by uh, another time, uh, some kind of the uh, companies, electronic companies, uh, we can get, for example, this one, the brands, and this computer here, and we can try to get the transparent computer here, and then control our devices. Okay. And uh, we have already uh, summarized the, uh, some kind of, the, into the, some kind of the, uh, these uh, papers, uh, by uh, some uh, Indian is also contributing. All this, actually, is all Indian. And uh, we have already prepared this by a very strong one, a very high thermal distance one, and this means that uh, polyurea is a texture and transparent one. And uh, this is the last slide of the management. Uh, we, uh, this is a uh, collaboration for this. The staff that is related to the student and other professors. And uh, in our, our laboratory, uh, this third one is. Uh, the third one is uh, from the international uh, uh, countries, and uh, this one is here. Okay? Uh, another one is from uh, uh, the other countries, but uh, in our now the, 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 the six Indian journeys. Uh, uh, and uh, this companies, uh, 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 Mr. Jimmy Akuda and Mr. Yohei uh, Yoshinaka, and also okay? and later uh, they uh, will make a uh, presentation. Please uh, here, okay? And uh, I also make uh, some uh, appreciation uh, to the financial support uh, to the uh, the government. Okay, thank you very much.
The next speaker is Professor Manohar V. Badigar. Professor Badigar has 20 years experience in area of polymer hydrogen, water soluble polymers, associated polymers and hydrophobically modified polymers, experience of postdoc at University of Stretch Clyde in UK and sir has published 57 papers in international journals and has two US patents. So I would like to invite sir for a session. Thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you, Kaneko Sensai, for uh, introducing me to this conference. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Professor Manish Diani and his brothers, for inviting me to give a talk here in this BIPON 2016 in the session Smart Polymers and Multifunctional Polymers. The title of my talk is uh, New Hydrophobically Associating Polymers and Gels and Synthesis Biology and its Application. Before I actually go into my talk, I'd like to share a couple of slides on where I come from. I come from <coughs> National Chemical Laboratory, which is situated in Pune, and uh, this is the main building of uh, National Chemical Laboratory and which was established in 1950. Uh, you know, NCL belongs to CSIR, Council of Scientific and Industry Research, and uh, this is a government uh, organization, and we have 38 laboratories like NCL all over the country, like NPL Delhi, ICT Hyderabad, IIT Dehradun. So there are so many laboratories like this, NCL, in our country, and uh, we do research in chemical sciences, road science, biology, uh, advanced materials, all kinds of research we do in this 30 laboratories. Well, uh, the hierarchy of our uh, CSIR is, you know, we have a uh, uh, president who is the prime minister of our country and vice president is the minister of science and technology. And of course, we have all the heads of 38 laboratories for direct general who is headquarters in New Delhi. And of course, we have a uh, governing body advisory board, and of course, various laboratories and the directors of each laboratory. Well, at NCL, we have about 300 scientists, and uh, about technical 300 total technical scientists and technical staff. And uh, we have interdisciplinary research centers uh, in the area of polymer science, organic chemistry, catalysis, material chemistry, chemical engineering, and process development. Since it's a government laboratory, we have excellent you know, uh, equipments to do chemical science and uh, uh, we have about uh, 550 PhD students. You are all doing your bachelor's and master's here and we have about 600, 550 to 600 PhD students and uh, who continue for the PhD program at National Chemical Laboratory. And of course, we also publish about 350 uh, international uh, papers, international journals and we also do applied research and we file patents. When you do applied research, there is some intellectual property. So that property is saved by filing a in nature. Hydrophilic means they, they like water. So they are soluble in, in 
water. So that's, they have functional groups which are hydrophilic functional groups. So they are called as water soluble polymers. And some of these examples are, you know, you can see here, carbocols, carboxymidine cellulose, polyvinyl alcohol, polyethylene. Why they are so important? The important you can see here, they are used as thickening agents, gelling agents, you know, and stabilizing agents, proclinating agents, moisture retention agents. So they are all used in your cosmetics like creams, lotions, ointments, for example, in inks. And uh, they are also used in paste, toothpaste. Suppose if you don't use a water soluble polymer because they act as a moisture retention aid. If you don't use a toothpaste, after some time the toothpaste will get dry. You can't squeeze toothpaste outside the tube. So you need a water soluble polymer as a, as a moisture retention aid. So they are very important um, materials, but they have some drawbacks. Because your ointments, creams, lotions, they have lots of other compounds like additives. They have, you know, uh, they have different pH, they have salts. So because of this, the thickening agent, uh, thickening property of the water soluble polymer goes down. So there is some drawbacks of water soluble polymers. In order to overcome these problems, now new systems are called as the hydrophobic associated polymers. These are new systems, of course, they have been here for uh, maybe 10 years, but uh, they, they take care of some of the drawbacks of water soluble polymers. So what are these uh, hydrophobically associating polymers or hydrophobically moderated polymers? They are basically uh, water soluble polymers, but you put small amount of hydrophobic compounds in water soluble polymer. You, you have to use a very small amount, like something like less than 5 to 10 more percent. But if you use more, they become water insoluble because they are hydrophobic and they try to repel water, so then they become insoluble. So you have to add a very small amount of hydrophobic compound into water soluble polymer. And then, of course, you see a very interesting uh, you know, viscosification, shear thickening, shear stability, temperature stability, and of course, uh, salt stability. I will show you some of the examples in my later slides, but uh, these are the prob problems which are being overtaken. Uh, overcome by using these kind of uh, hydrophobic accessory polymers. Now, how do you prepare them? You can prepare them by two ways. One is that you can, you can do co-polymerization. You can take hydro, you know the polymerizations, like it goes to polyethylene, PVC, polymer chloride goes to polyvinyl chloride. So it's a polymerization reaction. So what you do is that you take polymerize, you take uh, hydrophilic monomer, hydrophobic monomer, and then you do polymerization, so you get a you know a hydrophobically monitored polymer. But the other way is that you take a ready-made water soluble polymer from the market and then do some chemistry. You add some you know some hydrophobic compounds to these water soluble polymers, and then you, then you do something like a post-polymerization functionalization, so you end up getting hydrophobically associated polymers or hydrophobically monitored polymers. This is very simple, and in our laboratory we follow this method because we can buy uh, water soluble polymers directly from the market, and you do something for chemistry, and then you end up getting the hydrophobically modified polymers. So we follow the second method. I will show you some of the examples. So how do you put hydrophobic compounds? What are the ways of putting hydrophobic compounds in a water soluble polymer? You can put them randomly, like for example, this is the red color is the hydrophobic compound, and this is the polymeric chain, a hydrophobic polymeric chain. You can put them randomly, or you can put, you can make a blocks of uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So you can make a block of polymers. And then you can also make, uh, you know, adjust the blocks, you can get a hydrophobically modified polymers. Or also you can put the hydrophobic compounds at the end of the polymer. So this is like this thing. So this is a hydrophobic polymer, you put hydrophobic at the end of the polymer. And when you take this polymer and put it in water, you know, they like the hydrophobic compounds come closer together and they make a flower like micelles like this. And these flower like micelles reach and then they increase the viscosity of the polymer solution. So this is called, you know, end capping of the polymers, and this gives a very interesting property of, uh, you know, increasing the viscosity of the creams, lotions, and, you know, some of the yields and all. So these are the modular structures one can put it. And uh, now I come back to the, uh, you know, again, nature, that we are using two hydrophobic compounds from the nature. One is, uh, you know, cashew fruit. Uh, you all must have seen a cashew fruit. And of course, the cashew nut, of course, everybody must have seen it. Uh, it's a very expensive cashew uh, nut, I mean, uh, everybody uh, use it. So this, you know, when you take out the nut, the epitaph of this nut contains a, a non-edible oil, a non-edible oil, which is inexpensive, and India makes a lot of this non-edible oil. So this is called cashew nut cell liquid. And this cashew nut cell liquid, chemically, it is like a phenolic structure. It's a phenol with a side chain of C15H31, and this C15H31 is a hydrophobic compound. 
So I want, I take this hydrophobic compound to make my polymers, associated polymers or hydrophobic molecule model. And the compound is the uh, trihydroxy benzoic acid, it's so called as the gallic acid, which is again obtained from Mopar. And uh, you know, uh, here is uh, Sumatra and all kinds of things you can see get it from the uh, bio-based materials. And this has got three hydroxy groups. I can put hydrophobic compounds here, and it has got a functional group here. So I can use it as you no know, for making hydrophobic associating polymer. So these two hydrophobic compounds I'm using to make hydrophobic associating polymers in my laboratory. Now coming to that one example, this is a carbophol, uh, you know, this is polyacrylic acid. I use a natural cell liquid hydrophobic that I would get it from nature, and I simply do a chemical reaction, uh, you know, acidification reaction, carboxylic acid and OH. So I get a polymer which is you know, modified with this uh, natural cell liquid. And you can see here how the viscosity changes, one, two, three, four, four orders of magnitude changing the viscosity. For example, just the polyacrylic acid shows a liquid here, after modification you can see a gel. You know, come something like the viscosity has gone up so high, so that you know you get a very small modification, you get a very big uh, change in the property. So this is one example, and we have had an illustration long time ago. We also published this work, and uh, we are trying to see whether industrially somebody can use this polymer for it increasing the stuff. So another example, same like polyvinyl alcohol. Here we have used the gallic acid, and gallic acid we have used with the polyvinyl alcohol. It's easily available in the market. And uh, so we can do a simple chemistry and we can modify this and again you can see the same uh, phenomena here that uh, it, it just increases the property of viscosity uh, in our history. So another example, third example is the polyethylene glycol. I mentioned to you about the flower like muscles. So you can buy polyethylene glycol from the market and polyethylene glycol you know PG, it has got two functional groups at the end, OH groups. And you can modify OH groups with this kind of a, a compound. And then you end up getting a, a polymer like this. It has got hydrophobic at both ends. When you put them in the water, they form a muscles like structures. And uh, they show enormous exponential growth in the viscosity here. And you can see the uh, phenomena happens here so nicely. And you can use uh, these polymers for increasing the viscosity of your pain, swine, and solutions. So these are the three examples I wanted to show you. And I come to the next part where I showed you something like a smart, uh, talk to you about smart polymers like thermoisoceline polymer. Uh, all of you have heard that the LCSD polymers, it's a thermal property of a, a system where you know normally when you want to increase the solubility of a polymer, you take it in the solvent, you warm it a bit. So you increase the solubility. Solubility is faster. But this, some of this polymer, the solubility goes down when uh, you, know, you increase the heat. So they are called like LCSD polymers. So one of the examples is the uh, polyana isopropyl acrylamide. Uh, this is the polymer and the structure is like this. This is a N isopropyl acrylamide. So it is a derivative of an acrylamide. So it has got a very interesting property of LCSD which is at 32 degrees centigrade. If you take this polymer in water, a solution, and if you warm it, it just becomes insoluble in water. It comes out of water. But if you cool it, it becomes a clear solution. That means it has got a LCSD phenomena and if we want to use this polymer to you know, make a smart polymer, what we have done is that we take this polymer and uh, functionalize it. For example, in my next slide I will show you, uh, if you take this polymer and attach it to any water soluble polymer, any for example you take polyacrylic acid, you take polymer alcohol, you take a carboxy with cellulose, if you attach LCSD polymer to that, it behaves like a thermoisocyting polymer. That means it doesn't undergo phase separation, but it undergoes from liquid to gel state by increasing the temperature. So for example, here, you can see it's a liquid here. By heating, it's a liquid here. By heating, it forms a gel. So that's why it's called a smart gel. That means at room temperature, it's a liquid. At about 40 degree centigrade or 37 degree centigrade, that's a degree, it forms a gel. So it transforms some liquid to gel, and that's why they are used as smart polymer, and they are used in injectables in drug delivery applications. Like for example, you take this polymer and put the drug in the solution and inject into the body. The body temperature is 38 degrees and 37 degrees centigrade. So at that temperature, it forms a gel, and the drug is really in a constant rate. So of course, there are so many questions need to be asked about this phenomena. Of a lot of research is going on on injectable polymers for drug delivery applications. So this is one of the examples, but I am trying to see, you cannot inject any polymer into the body. It has to be non-toxic, it has to be approved by FDA, so I am trying to make a polymer which is... Uh, I don't know, 15 minutes, so 
So I come to now, uh, so far I talked about uh, uh, you know, physical gels. So there are chemical gels. Of course, uh, that's mentioned yesterday, Professor Manish Biyani mentioned about, as I told you that I talked about superabsorbent polymers. Of course, superabsorbent polymer is one form of a gel. And uh, what are these polymeric gels? These are polymeric gels are basically a three-dimensional network structure. And uh, you know, they absorb the copious amount of solvent. And uh, they are not like you know, a sponge. You know, you take a sponge and put it in water, the water absorbs by capillary action. Whereas in the case of these gels, the water or the fluid, the solid absorbs in the form of it because of the osmotic pressure gradient. And uh, you can't squeeze out this polymer to take over water, okay, like sponge. So they are different from sponge, uh, different from capillary action. The absorption takes place basically uh, because of the change in the hemospotic uh, uh, difference. So they are used a lot of applications, they are used as drug delivery applications, uh, smart actuators, they are used as scaffolds in bioengineering, they are also used as uh, the uh, you know, exercise matrix for biological study. So the first commercial applications of hydrogen were shown by a, a Jacobson scientist called Otto Victor Ray. He showed that polyhydroxy can metacrylate hydrogen for contact lens applications. This was the first application shown uh, based on the uh, hydrogels. Now, I, we, in our laboratory, we have prepared, you know, hydrogels based on polyurethanes, uh, polyethylene glycol, uh, and uh, isonic based hydrogels. For example, it's a very simple reaction. You take polyethylene glycol, you take isonic, you take a cross treating agent. You simply one pot method, no solvent involved. You can use this reaction, and you can get a very nice hydrogels here. And this is the dry hydrogel, and this is the solar hydrogel. So these kind of hydrogels have uh, very nice applications for, you know, uh, scaffolds and implants. And uh, so we have done quite a bit of work on this. Actually, we have used the different diodes, and uh, we have made a very nice uh, polymeric based hydrogels. Uh, we also made a pore structure. We have studied the mechanical strength of these hydrogels by using Instron. We also studied the porosity of these hydrogels because porosity is very important for biological applications in digital engineering and scaffolds. And we have done the porosity analysis by microtomography, and uh, we don't have microtomography, but we have sent a sample to the United States, and we can find out that very nice microstructures of these structures, these polymers, and complex strengths are in the order of 0.2 to 0.3 megapascals, which is of course uh, in this range. And we are made into a variety of shapes and this thing. So I come to the next part where we use the curcumin. You know all curcumin hadi. Hadi is a very nice uh, chemical and it has got an antibacterial property, we are trying to use haldi into hydrogels. For example, one of the examples I want to, you know, this is the cocumin uh, structure, and uh, we simply use cocumin in the in polyethylene hydrogels, and uh, some part goes into a chemical reaction, chemical bonding, and some part is a physical interaction. So you see a very nice uh, hydrogels based on cocumin we have So these are all cocumin based uh, polyethylene hydrogels and uh, they have, uh, you know, they show excellent antibacterial, antibacterial, antimicrobial properties and you can make it to a variety of shapes and sizes and these kind of hydrogels have a lot of applications in, uh, in uh, biological, in scaffolds and implants. Of course, we have finally investigated because this kind of tubes can go into vascular gaps, you know, vascular gaps uh, in biomedical applications. Uh, and uh, so that's why you're finally years pregnant. Of course, eventually, uh, recently we have published a paper in chemistry for the years. Of course, they have excellent mechanical property. Look at this uh, little cumin. Uh, it has almost got 4.6 megapascals, uh, you know, mechanical strength. And uh, because of this cumin inside this, uh, the dissipation of energy takes place through cumin, and the energy, the strength of the hydrogen has increased So we have seen very good evolution here. And of course, uh, we also have very nice compressions of these materials. And uh, we have done the uh, you know, overall porosity, 77% of all porosity, the whole size of the of 200 to 400 microns, and one thickness is about 25 to 100 microns. So, of course, we can take this dimensions. Recently, of course, we have recently, last week, uh, the paper got published. We also made double crossing hydrogens. Like, for example, we simply take polyacrylic acid, we have the diamine. And we have got two diamines, one is the japonine and the systemine. And systemine contains a disulfide linkage here. You get a hydrogen with two cross linking agents, and selectively you can break one cross linking so that it will increase the cross linking, uh, decrease the cross linking density and increase the swelling ratio. So we can do this for you know stories of uh, drugs and kind of a toxicity. And you can see here by selectively breaking one cross linking, you can increase the drug uh, you know release. 
and uh, you can do it if I do it, the paper is by Senator uh, of course, uh, published uh, last week by uh, ICM. Now, of course, uh, we also done uh, uh, nanoparticles in gels. We have put nanoparticles in gels for catalytic applications, and uh, I would like to show you one example that is very simple. You simply take these gels and put it in the uh, gold, gold chloride solution, uh, high chloride solution, and uh, take off the gel, it absorbs high chloride uh, you know, uh, salt, and put it in the reducing agent, then you can make nanoparticles of gold in the hydrogen matrix. And these hydrogen matrix can be used for catalytic applications. So you simply take, uh, you don't characterization of course, you simply take the reactions of nitramine, you want to reduce it to nitramine, nitramine uh, you need a catalyst, gold catalyst, and you simply put that catalyst with the gel inside this reaction medium, and you know, the conversion takes place, and you take out, and then you do the reaction. So finally, I would like to say a few slides on my dear topic called superabsorbent polymers. You all know superabsorbent polymers are used extensively because they absorb large quantity of water. They are you know, basically used for baby diapers, uh, you know, in cellular napkins, you know, because they absorb uh, you know, body fluids, living sweat, and uh, so they have a lot of applications. So I am trying to make, again, a superabsorbent polymer based on a uh, uh, type work because they want a biodegradable superabsorbent polymer. So you can, you can, you can see here, uh, this absorption capacity of about 200 and 1000, you can see a very nice absorption capacity of this material. So, I would like to show, have you seen a superabsorbent polymer? Any of you have seen a superabsorbent polymer? Can I show a small demo uh, of the superabsorbent polymer? Yeah. I, have, I have a sample here that if you have not seen, uh, Professor Biani mentioned about the film, but uh, we have a powder here. All of you can see here a powder a white powder, I can show you how much it absorbs the water. You can see for yourself that uh, it's smaller than water. See, I have put a small amount of material in this glass. I can put a water in this, how it absorbs. a super absorbent polymer. For example, I just put a little bit of water, maybe half a glass of water. starch. Starch is not a moldable bulb. You know plenty of starch is available, potato starch, corn starch. People are trying to make a biodegradable uh, starch and the plastic, bioplastic. But unfortunately, accidentally, one lady was working trying to modify starch with the, you know, minor polymers and uh, she accidentally formed this kind of polymers. And uh, this were discovered in America, but mass products are now coming from Sumitomo, Japan. And they are all, you know, the, ma the major producers of this material, Sumitomo and BSL. They make this 800,000 tons of this material, oh. and uh, this is all based on polyacrylic acid. But I'm trying to make a biodegradable superabsorbent polymer based on guar gum or hydroxypropyl guar or some of the polyacrylic. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Uh, Rheology is you are studying the flow of 
जो पहली बार ड्रॉप सॉल्यूशन और ड्रॉप भी मैरिट ऑफ कंपनी सो एब्सॉर्प्शन कम्स बेसिकली बिकॉज़ ऑफ द क्रॉसिंग स्ट्रक्चर इन द पॉलीमर आल्सो द हाइड्रोफिलिक नेचर ऑफ द पॉलीमर इफ यू पुट मोर एंड मोर हाइड्रोफिलिक ग्रुप्स एंड लेस एंड लेस क्रॉसिंग यू कैन सी योर एब्सॉर्प्शन विल गो अप सो एब्सॉर्प्शन इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द क्रॉसिंग डेंसिटी यू आर मेकिंग द पॉलीमरिक चेंज यू नो क्रॉसिंग बीच अदर and if you put too much of crossing they less absorbance and of course uh, its option also depends on the presence of salt presence of ph so you you have to worry about all that thank you sir yeah that's a very wonderful work and i think this is a piece of motivation for all the chemists here who really want to develop something new but we should know what the challenges of what new polymers we need for our challenges here this kit can we convert back no. this gel into the liquid फास्ट If you have aluminium, then you have much faster. So the that valency of the uh, salt makes a lot of difference because it absorbs not in distilled water, drinking water, but it absorbs only 100, 150 ml of urine. But that's good enough. One gram, 150 ml of urine in diapers it contains hardly four grams. In baby diapers it contains four grams. In sanitary napkins it contains about something like 2.5 grams because right. it absorbs uh, menstrual cycle exudates and also. Uh, of course, it has got applications in wound, wound healing applications because you can take this into a making to a sabudana, you know sabudana, sabudana. Yes, yes, yes. So like that, you can make this, and you can put antibiotics in that. And when you put near the wound, uh, you know they swell, and the antibiotics release very slowly, and then it absorbs the wound exudates. So in Japan, of course, uh, there are materials available for wound healing applications. Wonderful.